Welcome to Lab 5. So today is going to be a really fun day. It's going to be uh, stuff that you already know for this uh, preparatory lab. And then we'll do another review of some of that stuff. One of the things I've done is I've already downloaded Lab 5. You can see I've got it over here. So uh, I'm just going to make this full screen and go to the, so you have two folders in Lab 5, the Medieval Practice and the Style Review. We're st starting with a Style Review. And you'll see here that I've named your index.html file for you. And we've got two PNGs here. Let's make this bigger. So this is the complete finished lab right here. You'd have to zoom in to see it all. Um, I could make this bigger for you. But we're going to start by just looking at this. So these are our first step. This is step one. Let's look at what we have. I'm going to right click on this, open with live server. And it's just a bunch of HTML with a few styles on it already. What is this? This is an HTML document that you can download from this website, CSS Zen Garden. This website is a really beautiful website designed for people, practitioners of CSS. And so what you can do is download the HTML file, which I've done and you have right here. This is it. And then you can look at what lots of people do using CSS to this file. So this HTML file here is the exact same HTML file that you see here. What's changed about it is that it's had some CSS added to it. Only CSS. Nothing in the HTML, so nothing in here has been changed. This is always going to be what it is, but we are going to add some styles here in between the head tags. Oh my gosh, look at that big head tag. The head tag starts here and we've got these two long HTML comments. Do you recognize that comment tag? I'm sure you do. I'm just saving us some space here. There's another long HTML comment. And here's the closing head tag. So let's go back to Zen Garden and just take a peek. This is just one person's CSS designs for that HTML file. Here is another one. It's called Mid-Century Modern. There's Mid-Century Modern. Very different looking, isn't it? Remember, though, it's the exact same HTML file. There's nothing different about it. And in this one, in the one previous, all the extra designs are listed over here. But in this one, all the extra designs are listed here. So there's mid-century modern. Let's look at the one called garments. Oh, this is interesting. I like that fixed background with the dungaree looking material. Um, let's look at steel. There it is. Oh yeah, I can see why it took so long. It's got moving parts. Very nice, very nice. Let's see, that was steel, and let's look at apothecary. This is a nice one, but look, the text isn't fitting inside those dingbats. I wonder if that's a purposeful mistake. Even when I change the size of my display, it doesn't change. I wonder if it changes Nope. Hmm. There's a mistake there. Okay. Anyway, you get the idea. It's the same HTML file with different CSS. Now, let's jump back to Visual Studio Code and create some CSS. We're going to put our style tag. This is going to be an internal style sheet. So the style tag B 
begins like this and it ends like this. And then I'm going to put all my styles in between here. So the first thing I'm going to look at is this text styling result. Um, and I want to compare that to my HTML file here. And the first thing I notice that would be changed about everything on this page is the font. So let's go back to index and use the body tag. Remember with CSS, you type the HTML element and then you put your curly brackets and you put your style rules in between. So I'm going to name font family and I will choose Arial. Notice that when you choose a font family, it's got three options. That's because if your computer doesn't have Arial, it will go to Helvetica. If it doesn't have Helvetica, it will just go to any sans serif font. So I'm going to choose that. And then I'm going to do one other thing just because I know something is coming up. And I'm going to make the font size be, oops. 100%. I'll explain that in a second. So there it is. It updated right away. And um, let's compare this to the text styling result. It's close. Now it says in the instructions to make this two times bigger than the default font. Okay, right now it's about one and a half times bigger. So let's go here and let's check out what it is. It's the H1. So it's CSS Zen Garden. That's it, this right here. So I'm going to go back to my styles and type the H1 as my HTML element that is the selector, the curly brackets, and font size. Now remember, I could choose 100%, and that would, if I do a save, that doesn't, that makes it 100% of the standard font size. I can choose 200%, save, and that will make it basically what it already is. An H1 is 200% bigger. So the instructions say two times bigger than the default font. So that would be that. That's what we've got here. Um, my zoom on this is a little bit bigger than, oops, normal. So there it is. I guess I don't have an exact zoom. Oh, I don't have an exact zoom amount. Um, but this definitely reflects that. So the next thing I want to do is make the road to enlightenment. So what is this about participation and quite a few other things. Make all of those underlined and small caps. This one I've already done. That one we've already done. So what is, what are all those? Those are uh, H3, the road to enlightenment. So that's road to enlightenment. What is this about? These are all the H3s. Remember the beauty of CSS is that you only have to make one style and they all change. So I'll choose my H3 as my HTML selector, get the curly brackets in, and to make it small caps, which by the way, I would never do. It's, it's actually a bad design choice, but this is not my design. And it's font variant that is small caps. Let me save that. And now we have small caps. What else do they want me to do? Oh, underline it. Another really bad design choice. I'm sorry, but it just is. Because you would never underline something unless you want it to be a live link. But let's add to the H3 text 
decoration. Uh, text decoration. Did I spell that right? Yes. We want underline so that we can follow the directions. And the last thing, there it is, all underlined. The last thing is to make the links that dark red. So how many of you remember what the HTML element is for a link tag? Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but let me show you a trick. Here's a link right here. And if I right click on this and choose inspect, it's going to show me over here what that looks like in the HTML file. The link tag, you might say it's the href tag, but it's not. It's the a tag. href is the attribute that's been put on the a tag. So the a tag is what we're going to be styling here. So let's get the a tag, curly brackets, and color. I think we can just call it dark red because I'm quite sure, yep, that's a color. Save. And let's close the inspector, and there's our link tags dark red. So we've finished with this portion. Let me zoom out. We finished with this portion of the assignment. Now let's go in the next video and make it look like this.